Hello everyone, today's video is going to be about how to start your gender transition. I do get asked this question quite frequently and I relate to it because when I was starting to come to realization with my identity and what I wanted to do with my life, I didn't know what to do, I didn't know um, the steps that I had to take, I didn't know how to start my transition. So I wanted to make this video of how I did that and some tips for you all out there who are in the same position that I was about two years ago. So primarily, the most important thing is to be uh, aware of your identity, establish your identity, and make it known to yourself. And once you establish your identity with yourself, you can take the time to decide if you want to transition. If that's something that interests you, then you can go further in your transition and you can make more decisions for yourself. If you don't want to medically transition, that's perfectly fine. It's not something that is set in stone. You do not have to medically transition, and I want to make that perfectly clear. It's everyone's own personal choice and for my own reasons, I medically transitioned because it was what was good for my mental health, my physical health, and my overall um, place in the world. So just take the time to really think about it because it's a very, 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 um, it's a very big decision and a very important one. So once you've established your identity and what you want to do, speak with your family doctor or um, someone in the medical field that can refer you to a gender identity clinic or a gender identity therapist. I spoke to my family doctor and he referred me to a gender therapist and that is where I began my medical transition. Realize that it's not an overnight process and that it does take time and with the amount of exposure and visibility that the trans community has received in the past two years especially, there's more need for a gender therapist because there are more people who are now aware of why they feel different, why things aren't matching in their head and on their body. So it's it takes time and you need to realize that it's not an overnight process. Even once you get into a gender clinic, that doesn't immediately mean you're going to receive um, the medical attention you want right away. It does mean that there is going to be time that is going to need to be taken. In the start, you're most likely going to be seeing your gender therapist talk about your feelings, about your disconnect with body and soul, or why you do not feel at home with who you are, and you're you're going to be talking about, you know, why you, what, what you want to do with your life, do you want to medically transition, how do you feel, how does this make you feel? They're going to talk about your past, what you want to do in the future, how you feel right now, because it's something that is a really big step and they're not doing it to say oh you're not trans you're not trans it's more so that they want to make sure that you're mentally prepared and physically prepared because it is something that you need to have a very good mindset and you need to have a healthy one because it does um, come with its territory so I want to make everyone aware of that Remember that each clinic that you go to um, around the world, everyone is different. Everyone has different guidelines. For me, when I went, I was 14 years old and I was told I can't get on hormones till I'm 16, so I had to go on blockers first. And it that's what happened. I started hormones when I was 16 and blockers. Um, I'm going to say I started seeing my clinic in December of 2013 and I got on blockers in April. So it was about five months of just talking and speaking. Um, so that was that. Be patient in between visits and checkups and while you're waiting to get into a clinic and think about what you want to do next, what you want to achieve next. Because if you're on top of what you want to do and where you want to be, I think it shows the medical team that you have more of a, that you have an idea of where you want to be and what you want to do with your life and who you want to be. and that's what I have really done is thought about okay what do I want to do next so when I was on blockers I was like you know I, I just I want to be on hormones and now that I'm on hormones we're talking about sex reassignment surgery which is a huge thing but I'm ready for it um I'm ready to take that step in my life and I think that my medical team has really been there for me and has helped me through what I want to do and why do I want to do it, how is it going to benefit me and all these things. Um, and last, I just want to advise that self-diagnosing can be extremely dangerous. So if you want to self-diagnose yourself with hormones, it's not safe and it might be a quick way to get on hormones, but you have to remember that your body's weight, the um, levels of other hormones and other things in your body all contribute to the amount of uh, hormone that you take and how often you take it and all of these things. So 
make sure that if you do self-diagnose, I, I just say go to a doctor that can actually take blood tests and, and diagnose you properly with the prescriptions that you need and the dosages that you need because it's going to be much more beneficial to you. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you want more videos regarding transitioning, I would be glad to do that. So until I see you next time, thank you. And please subscribe because I really do appreciate it. And I can't wait to make more videos. Thank you. Bye.